time. So if you have any questions about Prometheus and or Grafana, um, this is now a Q&A session, because reasons. Does anyone have questions? Sure. Testing, testing. So any questions for me? Oh, 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 As a user of, of InfluxDB, uh, short explanation difference between Influx and uh, Prom uh, uh, Prometheus? So the question is the difference between InfluxDB and Prometheus. Let's take it. Uh, so I guess the main difference is that Prometheus is a full monitoring system, which comes basically with end-to-end. -end. So we have instrumentation libraries that you can use for instrumentation, instrumenting your own code. Then we have exporters for a bunch of different tools that are out there, like MySQL. So that's the instrumentation side. That's covered by Prometheus. And then we have Prometheus itself, which is a monitoring system, which includes a time series database, as well as actually the collection. So it can talk to service discovery systems to detect what is out there to be monitored, and then fetch the instrumented uh, uh, metrics, right? And then you have the query language on top, and you have the alerting on top, and you have the alert management. Um, so basically, the whole chain from instrumentation up until graphing and alerting is covered by Prometheus, whereas InfluxDB is first and foremost a uh, time series database. Of course, there are also tools, um, but they are sort of more in a standalone manner, I would say. So what I would say is like, you know, if we're going to try and compare apples to apples, we need to compare Telegraph, Influx, and Capacitor to Prometheus's exporters, um, not the client libraries, because Influx doesn't have those, um, and uh, then you've got Prometheus, and then you've got the Alert Manager, because that's the fair comparison, because those are roughly the same things. Uh, and there's architectural differences in there, so on. The way I see Influx is, well, Prometheus is a metric system. You just saw my talk, those of you who are here. Uh, metrics give you breadth, not depth. Influx, I see, is actually an event logging system, so it's a log system that's actually also fairly good at doing metrics. Like, it can ingest graphic data, but it fundamentally is an event logging system, not a metric system. So that's kind of where I see the difference. And then, like, Capacitor, I, I would, like, it is fairly powerful, but, like, all the things people say about Prometheus, it doesn't scale horizontally. It turns out, yeah, Capacitor uses the exact same way of scaling out that Prometheus does, which is you get the vertically shard, which I find amusing. And so that's the way I see it. And like, if you're looking at something like, say, IoT, the obvious choice there is Influx, all other being equal, because that's going to tend to be event logging. If you're looking for a general monitoring system, you know, I would suggest Prometheus, but I am a Prometheus developer. But that's the way I would see things. Next question. Uh, about uh, alerting in uh, the latest Rafana, uh, I want to have some template for many, many servers and have at least when I receive uh, alert uh, notify, notification, I want to see the host name. <laughs> what host name is <laughs> alerting? Is it possible to make? I don't think I quite understand the question. I think the question is he has a yeah. lot of dashboards and when he has alerts, he wants to know what host name created the alert. Uh, so, so alerts in Grafana right now only support serial names uh, and not tags like server, node, or something like that. Eventually, the alerting will also support tags, so you can include the uh, node or serial name or data center or something like that. But right now, you would have to format the legend to contain the server name or data center or something like that. I'm not sure if that answered your question. Uh, like the servers, I need to create a separate platform for that. You could use a wildcard uh, query uh, saying in Graphite you would place a star uh, where the server is. And then uh, only the series uh, violating the threshold will be included in the alert. So if you have 10,000 servers and two of them have a high CPU or something that you want to alert on, then only those uh, series will be present in the alert. Uh, I have a question regarding Grafana alerting as well. Uh, what is the roadmap for development of distributed alerting in Grafana? <laughs> the roadmap will be presented later. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I, I don't want to take bits of my talk uh, off right now, if that's OK. I should also say there happen to be other monitoring system alters here as well. This is the monitoring track, not the Prometheus and Grafana track, so come down. InflexDB uh, has pretty weird attention schema, and Grafana doesn't work with its retentions with InflexDB. How and who will solve this problem when you want to? make some aggregation and of all the metrics and to see them with the same dashboard instead of creating different dashboards for different time periods. So the question was about retention policies in InfluxDB and in Grafana, right? So we have been talking with the Influx data team and we have not found a common way of um, making that uh, configurable in some way. So right now you would have to configure each dashboard for certain um, policies and that's very cumbersome. You could use uh, interval templates or something like that for the policy selection, but there's no automated way. Thank you. Um, hello. Yeah. What's the uh, uh, ideal retention for Prometheus? Um, I heard uh, one time that only a few days or a few weeks, I don't know. Uh, is there unlimited retention for Prometheus, or do we need to put in place a strategy to back up the data? Uh, so the question is uh, Prometheus and long-term data storage, basically. Uh, so the thing is that Prometheus is designed for reliability which is different from durability. Uh, and basically, if you want to have infinite retention, that means you're basically creating a distributed storage system, which is really, really, really hard, and in the context of monitoring, unreliable. Because you want a monitoring system that if your network starts falling apart, it still keeps on working. So our approach to this is to see the storage for Meteos more as a cache, which might be a few weeks of a cache. Um, and then there's something else which has that a long term. So our strategy is, because we don't want to, we basically we don't have time to build one of these ourselves, we're busy with other stuff, that we will have interfaces out. So there's already the remote write code, and it's been there a few months now. So Prometheus can write out to another system, uh, and at the moment, like, there's Weaveworks Cortex, which is open source, and that can accept this data. And there's other systems as well which you can build there. And we're also, at some point, going to add the read path as well, which can read the data back in. So you can transparently access your data. And then you, know, you can basically have a separation of concerns that all your alerts are based on the cache, which is all local, all inside Prometheus, all reliable. And if you want to go back more than a few weeks or whatnot, you can have the relatively unreliable query to your long-term storage. And if that's broken, well, you've just lost graphing until you fix that, but you haven't affected your core alerting abilities. But the idea is that this will be a separation of concerns between Prometheus and the long-term storage because we don't want that sort of uh, CP system with strong consistency when we care about availability for, well, alerting, because I shouldn't use the word monitoring after my own talk, but alerting and critical dashboards but not trending. Next question. There. When I raise the mic, you can just raise your hand then, because that saves time. And just to be clear, they, we had to do the projector working again, but because of how the time slots work, we need to use up time. If you have a long-term matrix uh, storage, you have to build the system for analytics, because with a long-term storage, without large-scale analytics, does not not make sense, no? Sorry, can you repeat the question like, a little closer to your mouth? Ah, okay. With a long time storage, without uh, mass analytics, with a map reduce or other framework, uh, it doesn't make sense because, uh, okay, you feel with the hard drive, but uh, we are not able uh, the capability to retrieve it and uh, analyze it efficiently, no? I think the question was that. Only, ha I think the question was that only having long-term storage without having the analytical capability of Prometheus wouldn't work. And the answer is, you shouldn't own. Is this good? <laughs> Can you please stop talking or leave? Thank you. Um, 
wenn wir es wegschreiben, dann müssen wir es auf jeden Fall analysieren. Ja. Ja. Readback. Ja, schon klar, mal zu, so ich mal. Uh. So basically the question was, if I write out over this remote write pass, how do I read back the data? Was that the question? Okay, so, so basically the answer right now is that we have remote storage APIs that let you write out data to arbitrary systems. But there's no read back API yet at this point. Um, sort of you can build your own on your own remote storage integration, but there's no generic read pass at this point, but there will be hopefully within this year. Is the long time goal to work side by side with traditional monitoring and alerting systems like iSinger, or is the long term goal to uh, replace these tools? Uh, I would pretty clearly say it's the goal is to replace these, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, I mean, I think it's mostly focused on checks and alerting. Um, so my talk kind of goes into this, like, what are our approaches to sort of solve this problem in a different way. So if you want to come around later for this talk, you will see more. So I have to see your talk, okay. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Does your talk also cover multi-data center application monitoring? Um, I mean, in theory, the, the, you will see that the concept is kind of agnostic to that, right? So it would totally work. Um, in, in like one or two sentences, the basic idea is we collect time series data, and then we have sort of our state of truth in terms of sample data, and then we can define alerting on top of that. And about what we collect this data and how we collect it is completely separated from the alerting layer. That's sort of the short story. The alerting layer is, um, is what's mostly interesting in this because what you have is multi-data centers hosting one application and then how do you alert on what's going wrong on there? Yeah, I mean so Prometheus is collecting time series data, right? So Prometheus can monitor multiple data centers, there are like patterns how to set it up and then we have time series data and this is completely separated from it and on top of that we define alerting. So as soon as you have a monitoring system that can collect time series data uh, in multi-data center um, sort of layouts, um, you can also alert on it. So a thing with Prometheus is if you can graph on it, you can alert on it and you can certainly graph multi-data center metrics like latency and so on. There are some reliability questions about you know, being tightly bound to those data centers being up in order to be able to be alerting. Uh, so I would generally advise as much as possible push the alerts down to the data center level to avoid the WAN links being on your critical paths for alerts. Uh, but if you want to alert on like global latency, you can. Just be aware of the reliability implications that, that depending on how you do that, you might get no alerts if your network's dodgy. Uh, was there a question in the middle here? Yeah. Um, so uh, extracting metrics from logs obviously isn't ideal. Like logs are logs, metrics are metrics to your earlier point. But um, in terms of support for doing stuff like that anyway, um, do you support tools like Logstash and that kind of stuff as well? Uh, so Logstash is just a transport layer, um, as Fluent D is. Um, it just moves data from A to B. Uh, so as I said in my talk, logs, they're great for breadth, uh, sorry, for depth. And go down to breadth by depth, you'll end up with much information. But in, for Prometheus, two tools have been written called the Grok Exporter and Mtail, it's Google's Mtail, which can do that. And Fluent D might also be getting support to extract some metrics from logs. Because my stance on it is like, it's an old, if you want logs, use logs. If you want to use metrics, use metrics. If you only have logs, well, at least try to get some metrics on them until you can fix things to be proper. Because let's be honest, the world isn't perfect. You need tools like these sometimes. And it's still the only way to discover disk failures is actually logs. We've checked Linux, at least when I checked two, three years ago, Linux did not export metrics. To let you know if your disk has failed, your only choice is looking for syslog. You know, all those messages when your disk is failing, that's how you find them, only way. Another question, you uh, were saying you would uh, like to replace uh, traditional systems like uh, Nagios or uh, the less important ones like Isinga. Um, if you have an environment which is absolutely not cloud native and it's uh, even not distributed to a lot of systems but consists of uh, industrial uh, controllers, uh, robots, uh, whatever boxes, which uh, can be checked with a small script uh, very easily. How, how uh, 
do you think you, can you replace all this knowledge that has been built up in the last years? Okay. You, you can't uh, write so exporters for everything. Uh, uh, Richie wants to answer that one. Uh, as someone who's not working at a cloud native company, yes. Um, so if, the, if you have caching concepts in your, in your uh, monitoring, where you basically have some nodes which cache for, for higher level uh, monitoring nodes, uh, you have to take that into account, but it works. You just have to plan for it accordingly, but yes. So even without anything dynamic or, or even with really old legacy applications, we see huge benefits with Prometheus and Grafana, huge. Yeah. Uh, so a, a little secret is that Prometheus doesn't know what a container is. Prometheus does not know what a cloud is. Prometheus just has labels which you put your own ideas onto. So if you want to monitor actual hardware, you can. Like, I've got a Prometheus running at home. It monitors like three machines and a switch. Don't ask why I've got a 48 port switch at home. Uh, but like, you can do all these things. One thing to watch though is the trade-offs we make are the engineering trade-offs around on-call, where losing a little bit of data is better than losing monitoring. If you're talking industrial control, like actual industrial control, I would be evaluating Prometheus very carefully to see if the trade-offs we've made, which make total sense when talking about web servers or network switches, whether those trade-offs also make sense in industrial control sense. Because we have made trade-offs there in terms of precision, just to get better availability. Well, uh, do you have any idea how memory intensive can Prometheus get? Uh, I think I have a VPS that has a pretty limited amount of memory and I was pretty surprised that with about 100 lines in the metrics file, it started eating like 2 or 3 gigabytes of memory. That seemed quite a lot. I've researched this recently. So the default for Prometheus uses about 4 gigs of RAM as of 1.4. These days it's probably down to about 3 gigs-ish. Uh, but if, if you look at my blog, Rust Session blog, there's an article there on how much RAM does Prometheus need for ingestion, which goes into this. Uh, yeah, also, um, uh, you might have to look at the storage flex, right? There are like several knobs you can configure to basically tweak the memory usage uh, at runtime. We kind of know that's not ideal. Um, so actually we're working on a new storage layer. Actually I have the benchmark running right now. Um, so hopefully we are going to cut down memory usage by, I don't know, like 75% or something. So if everything goes right, it will definitely go down significantly in the next months. Uh, could the next speaker get hooked in because we've got like five minutes until the next talk? Whoever the next speaker is. So I think we can fish in one more question while this next speaker is getting ready. So first there was a request about putting up the slides um, right now so people can look at them. Uh, we will hand them over to, to um, our back office, so to speak, and they'll put the link of the presentation into the uh, description of the talk. So if you want, just want to look at the slides, you can go there. And while we are waiting, show of hands, who is using Nagios? Who's using a single? Who's using Savix? Yay! Uh, who's using Prometheus? Who's using Graphite? Who's using Grafana? Did you see that? Did you? <laughs> Anything else which I should ask for? Lockstash? Greylock? <laughs> That didn't work out the way you wanted it. <laughs> what? RTG? Well, MRTG, yeah. With a crank on it. 